Joan Harris, Director of Training and Canine Behavior at PAWS Chicago. Today we're going to talk about preventing and breaking up a dog fight. For those of you who have never witnessed a dog fight, it can be a really scary thing. Lots of noise happens, there's growling, thrashing, all types of things going on. And if you've never seen it before, you may not know what to do. I'm going to try to give you the tools today so that you feel more confident if you're ever in that position. There are three places basically at pause where a dog fight could occur. The first one would be in a dog's kennel or suite where they're, when they are housed with two or more dogs. The second place would be on a walk. This could be in a hallway or actually outdoors on leash. If another dog approaches you or you get too close or someone isn't watching their own dog and it's off leash. The third and most frequent place for dog fights is in play groups. We do play groups in different uh, areas. We do them at, up in Highland Park, we do them in the play space at Rescue and Recovery, and we do them on the rooftop at the Paws Chicago Adoption Center. Let's talk about prevention. We have some protocols set up at Paws Chicago to keep you safe. Keep dogs off your laps, especially in the kennels. If you go into a suite and you give one dog attention and not the other, jealousy can happen. So be very conscious of this. If you're in there and one dog is getting all the attention, the other dog is very likely to snap at him. So ignore the dogs a little bit when you're in there. Act very calm and appropriate. Also, never bring food into the room unless both dogs are leashed. If you're doing any kind of training, have two handlers, dogs on leash before food is made available. When you're taking a dog for a walk, always look before you step out. I never allow the dog to leave me. So if I step out of the doorway first, I can see what's out there. If there's another dog waiting outside or someone's passing, this can prevent a fight. Also, outdoors, when you're walking and you get to a corner, always look around the corner first. Don't let the dog lead you. You don't know what's around there. Somebody could be walking a dog right around that corner and bam, right into them. So be very careful about that. If you're in a high traffic area, keep the dog on a short lead and avoid other dogs. If you see someone walking with another dog, you can cross the street or drop back, but give yourself appropriate distances in between the other dogs to prevent a fight. If a dog rushes up to you off leash, you've got to be very careful. There isn't a lot you can do. I usually try to step in between the two dogs and make a lot of loud noise to scare that other dog away. Sometimes that's enough. If you do get into a fight though, and you're alone, call for help, just yell. Don't drop your leash. Always hang on to your dog whenever possible. If two people approach each other on the street and they get into a fight somehow, or somebody comes around the corner and you haven't seen it, instruct the other person to hang on to their leash. Two people hanging on to a leash is the best thing that can happen. You don't want to drop the leashes, which will cause this big whirlwind. So if both people are hanging on to the leash, wait for the dogs to release. You can yell, make a loud noise. Sometimes that's enough to startle them away. But if one dog hangs on, don't try to pull the dogs apart. Doing this can cause a more serious injury. So generally, if one dog is holding on, I try one of two things. Put pressure straight up, which can cut off the dog's air just enough to make them gag and open their mouth. Or you can try pulling your leash into the other dog, which will also cause a gag reflex and cause the dog to spring off the other dog. In a play group, stay vigilant. Most fights, be stopped before they even happen if you stay vigilant and watch what's going on. Interrupt or intervene if you're uncomfortable at any time with the play. I'm going to get into a little more detail about that later on in this tape, but basically you really want to make sure your eyes are peeled in the play group and you're not getting distracted by other things going on. Even with proper handling, a dog fight can occur. Most fights sound a lot worse than they really are. They're really scary the first time you hear one. It's a lot of growling and thrashing, etc., etc. But knowing what to do can put yourself at ease. Remember that most injuries that happen can be the human sticking their hand in the middle of things. So the first thing you want to do when you see a dog fight break out, stop and think. Know where your hands are, know where your body parts are. Keep them away from the middle of a fight. There are prevention stations located in hallways and play spaces at both the Adoption Center and at Rescue and Recovery. In addition, we have one here at the Training Center, and we have two up at our North Shore location. One is in Dogtown, and the other is in the meet and greet or playroom. 
Be sure you know where they are before you handle a dog. Each prevention station should have the following tools. Spray or water bottles. These can be used to interrupt or intervene with dogs that are already starting to show the signs of a potential fight. Spray shield, which is a citronella spray. This can be sprayed at the dogs or near the dogs when they're already engaged in the fight. These are sounds that you can use to interrupt the dog. This is a cowbell. You could use a spray or a can full of pennies or clapping, banging bowls together, or an extreme noise, which is the air horn. We use this last. This is a, a noose. It can help you get control if a dog is off leash. Everyone should have one of these on them, a leash or a noose, when you're in a playgroup. And then we have two large objects here. We have a stick, PVC, and a crate pan. These two objects can be used to place in between dogs that are fighting to redirect them to another place. If you're walking down a hallway and you look into a dog's kennel or sweep and you see certain behaviors happening, you're going to want to intervene before a fight starts. These behaviors that you're looking for are play that is not mutual. In other words, both dogs aren't having a good time. There's not that flow happening. Or if you see one dog having a good time at the expense of another. In other words, they're maybe mounting, pinning, and the other dog is stressed. If you see a dog that's showing strong fear reaction to the other dog, or a dog that's overly aroused, can't settle down, he's bouncing around, jumping, that type of thing. Also, if you see a dog lashing out repeatedly, especially, to another dog that is doing something, that again could be mounting, pinning, inappropriately biting. Sometimes you'll see a dog grabbing another dog somewhere that is not nice, like a tail or the back of the leg. And of course, if an actual fight breaks out. So how do you intervene? best place to start is loud noise. So if you're walking down the hallway, you see one of those, follow those behaviors, bang on the glass. See if you can just break it up by making some noise. If you're walking by a kennel or suite, yelling aloud, enough, can sometimes be all you need. But if this doesn't work, or an actual fight is breaking out, you're gonna need to enter the suite. Start with your water supply. Your spray bottle can work wonders. Just spray right in the dog's face while they're starting a fight to interrupt. If a spray bottle is not available, grab your water bowl. It's right on the floor. Pick it up right in the dog's face. The shock of the water hitting them will sometimes be enough, of enough time to get something in between them to stop the fight. I usually go right then to my crate pan in a room, a coranda bed, any large object between the dogs creates that barrier to stop them. If the water didn't work to interrupt them, you're going to have to work your way up. I usually call for help at this point, and somebody can bring you more tools. An air horn makes a loud, obnoxious noise. Right? This can kind of shock them even more so than loud clapping, that type of thing. Citronella spray can be sprayed right directly at the dog or around them, depending on the intensity of the fight. If all else fails, pick up your coranda bed or a crate pan or a large object Place it directly in between the dogs and herd one away. As soon as you can, slide your noose or leash onto the dog. Get one of the dogs out of the room immediately and into a safe place where you can let them relax. Again, wait a little while, 30 minutes or so, before you do any intense examinations. Because at this point, your dogs will still be very excited because of the fight. In order to conduct safe playgroups, it's really important that you watch or observe experienced staff members for some time before you actually conduct one on your own. If you're doing a large play group, make sure you have a plan. Make sure you have enough people. If a fight breaks out, you want to make sure that the other dogs don't get involved too. Your volunteers or your other staff members can get those dogs out of the group before they get involved also, making your fight a lot easier to break up. It's real important to be very familiar with dog body language before you actually lead a play group. In the meantime, though, you can shadow experienced group leaders or experienced staff members conducting playgroups so you can get very familiar with 
when they interrupt or intervene in the group. Intervening or interrupting is very similar to the same thing you did in the sweeps or kennels. You're going to always interrupt the play group when you start to see that play is not mutual between two dogs. It's really not fun for one dog to be having a good time and the other one not. So when you see a dog that's doing inappropriate things with another dog, pinning them or two dogs ganging up on another dog, and you start to see that that dog is not having a good time, you want to interrupt. You also want to interrupt anytime you see fearful body language from a dog. A dog with a tucked tail, a dog that's slinking into the corner, a dog that's trying to avoid. Get that dog out of the situation. He's not happy and he may be pushed into starting a fight by biting. Lastly, of course, if a fight starts to occur, you really, really want to get in there immediately and stop it before it goes anywhere. And again, your tools are your friend. So your first thing to go to again is the water source. You see two dogs starting a fight, that spray can right away shock them out of it. You're up on the play roof, the hose. Got it all set up, you can just, same thing. Nice blast in the face, separates them, calms them down. Usually in this case, I separate them for a little while and then try to reintroduce them. If the same thing happens again, remove one of the dogs from the play group. Probably the one that's causing the most problems. So if your water does not work and you see the dogs escalating, it's turning into a not too good of a situation, you can go right ahead and make a lot of noise. This is a cowbell. That's a strange noise, something they haven't heard. Sometimes that's enough to shock them into stopping what they're doing and looking at you. Just a momentary time that you can get a leash on them. An air horn. This is a very loud noise, so you don't want to use this unless you really need to. This noise can hurt a dog's ear and it can also affect the other dogs in the area. So this is more of a last ditch effort. So you really want to stay away from this. And, and of course you've got your spray shield or citronella spray. This can be sprayed at the dogs if they're already fighting. If the fight's already occurring, again, you're going to want to get an object in between the dogs. Always be aware of where your body is. Never reach in and grab a collar under any circumstances when dogs are fighting. This can, if a dog grabs your hand, the damage that it can do on your fingers can be very intense compared to if they bite another dog who's protected by fur and other things. So sticking the crate pan in between, using a, a hard, large object to separate, those are much better choices than getting your body in. Again, if a dog locks onto another dog, in other words, holds on, um, you really don't want to pull them apart. So right away you want to think about getting something on the dog, a leash, and just pulling straight up or grabbing the collar at this point because the dog is stabilized and pulling directly in, which will cause the dog's mouth to open and pop off. Leash your dogs, remove them, take them back to their rooms, and again, wait that 30 minutes before you go to examine them. Remember your safety protocols and remember to stay safe. Ha, 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 ha.